Hey, how we doing everybody? Welcome back once again. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. So if you've caught my last video, you know I got a massive tree service score here from a brand new contact. And in the end of that video, you see me just start bucking up some of these rounds. Now this is all oak with just a couple cherry logs in here, but they're very big cherry logs. So fast forward a week, I am outside once again. Uh, I've ran a full tank through the 400C, as you've seen by the opening of this video. And I've got quite the pile of rounds here bucked up. And I'm starting to have trouble getting to the logs without tripping over rounds. So I want to get those moved. Um, in between all this, I was able to go last weekend up to Wolfridge, up to the Firewood Frenzy. And uh, what a great time that was. I didn't think we were going to make it this year. It's the first year I've ever been. But uh, my daughter, Evan's twin sister, had to register for classes at Iowa State University over in Ames, Iowa. So uh, we decided to make the trip to Wolf Ridge. So we just went up a day early and was able to go a little bit further north up to Eau Claire and had a great day up there good time good fellowship and then carried on uh saturday evening down to ames iowa to get her registered and uh what an experience that was beautiful day turned out to be up at wolf ridge i mean the morning rained but uh turned out to be an overall great day was able to uh hang out with jeremiah and amanda outdoors in the 608 and go over to the line kugel lodge got to see that so Overall, very, very good trip. And then rounded it off with getting my daughter registered down at uh, Iowa State. And uh, makes you feel good as a dad knowing where they're going and uh, what environment they're going to be in. And I was very impressed with Iowa State's campus and just everything i seen there. So that great trip. So here we are, like I said, a week later. I am getting some more work done on this it's about 7 30 at night that's about the only time you feel like getting outside and uh getting all sweaty because you know what sawdust does whenever you're sweating and as you can see there yeah so i'm gonna get all these rounds moved so i'm not tripping through them right over here in this dead spot so that way they're ready to be split while i'm doing that i'm just gonna throw some real quick clips in there on just some of the things i gathered while up at wolf ridge there's been some great videos put out that you can check out but i'm just going to throw a few highlights in there for you to enjoy while i'm doing this and uh when we come back i'll show you the overall pile and then i've got just a few more in here i got a goal tonight to get just a few more of these bucked up and then that way i could start cleaning this yard up so to make it easier to mow and get it kind of closer to the splitter so enjoy the footage from the firewood frenzy and uh we'll be right back been coming out um it really means a lot to us here to to have all this much support See, that's what, you know on a, on a rainy day and and uh not bob you got anything um no you safe you're gonna run into the splitters try to Try to think, make sure you don't put your hand anywhere that uh, you wouldn't keep intact. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> just be careful. <laughs>
come take them out. Um, the, the big tanks here are for the laser cutting. So this big one here is the liquid nitrogen. That's what we use to cut stainless and aluminum and a lot of thin carbon steel. It helps us cut faster and keeps the materials clean and corrosion free. Materials in are all of our raw materials. Our sheet metal, we have stainless aluminum, um, slate up to one inch mix, uh, AR400 and mild steel. Uh, usually use grade 50 AR400 and we use a lot of steel. And the laser currently is cutting stainless, so you guys can take a look in through that window and see it cutting some stuff for the barbecue grill for a local company. Nine guys welding now, um, plus a, a collaborative robot. Um, this is where most of the wedges get done. Um, over in this room over here, we have the aluminum. Uh, we're doing some frames and hydraulic tanks here. Uh, down on that end of the building, we usually weld the bigger things like the high output ma machines, the conveyors on the long bay over there. And then uh, that collaborative robot runs the, um, mainly welds the beams for the splitters. Here, and these are all ready for assembly. So you can see some of these have the <laughs> cylinders on them and are prepped for the next stage. They over kind of overloaded us. Normally we keep these inside, but uh, they had so many come through all, all at once that uh, we had to start staging them outside. Are, really they are ready for QC to check them over and then they'll get rolled out the back door for shipping or they'll get traded and sent out on a truck out this way. Uh, this one here, the red one in the front, is the same thing that Jeremiah has at Outdoors in 608. Um, he has an orange one, of course, but uh, this is the same unit. I believe he had the auto cycle. This one has the wobbling instead. And of course, we have the, the big BSC. And uh, the vertical splitters kind of took us off, off guard. Um, we sold way more than we thought. Uh, so. At one point, we had 50 of those on order. And, you know, they take 50 hours to build. Probably, uh, well, actually about 60 hours to build the first few, um, maybe a little longer. Um, but I think that, uh, you know, I think we really changed the game with that machine. Um, we, uh, we put a lot of thought into it. It took a long time to have the time to do it right, and but I think we I think we did a pretty good job of it. Um, and I proceeded to build a, a basically one of our high output machines, uh, something that I could tow down the highway, go over to my buddy John's house, and he would bring the tractor, I would bring the splitter. Justin, the guy that's selling fire pits out there, he would bring the saw, and the three of us would make a bunch of wood all together, all at once, and then I'd tow my splitter back home 30 miles and uh, you know, have a quart of wood done in three hours with the three of us, you know, uh, pot split in the truck back to the house, you know. Um, so that's how I started. And then um, economy in 2015 went down a little bit and the place I was working was looking to cut payroll. So I was one of the guys that they offered this huge bonus to work weekends. And now they did, they wanted to kind of get rid of weekend shift because they weren't as busy. They don't need to have the, the shop open. So I had a pink slip. And um, about five, five years at this place and I, I got dropped like a, just like that. And um, so I, I had a bill to pay. I had to pay my mortgage, uh, wife and kid at home. And uh, so I sold my splitter. And I had so many people call me about it that I offered to build another one. And so the number one splitter, I went to a guy in Augusta and then I, 
I, uh, I had a guy call me three days after it sold, and he's like, oh, I, you still got that splitter? I said, no, I sold that like three days ago, dude. And he's, he's, uh, he's like, oh, man, I really wanted that thing. I knew I should have called you earlier. I said, well, I tell you what. I said, I've got a welder in the garage. i got a bunch of steel. I could build another one for you if you want. And uh, this guy happened to be a retired baseball player. Uh, he was a designated hitter for the Twins and for the Mariners, for the Marlins. He played ball in Japan as a de designated hitter. He says, yeah, yeah. He says, uh, yeah, t I'll take a red one. And put a Honda on that thing and uh, bring it up here. I'll pay you cash for it. So, okay. I proceeded to build one for him, and uh, he was so excited about it. Um, I, well, first off, I pulled up to his house, and I was... I was worried about my truck leaking oil in his driveway, and uh, um, you know, a big 6,000 square foot house in Acton Alps, um, like super intimidated just to even go up to the guy's door, and I turn and look, and here's a guy walking over, he's wearing duck Carhartt pants and a red and black flannel, the classic Paul Bunyan guy, right? <laughs> the dude's like 6'4", and you know, built like a brick core pot. <clears throat> and uh, <laughs> he's coming over and he's looking underneath the machine and he's, he's, oh, this is so cool. You should, you should build another one. I was like, I don't know. I need to find a job. And uh, my wife's going to kill me if I keep doing this. And uh, he's like, no, no, you, no, you did a really good job of this. I bet you somebody else is going to want one. You, we keep building that. Here's a couple hundred bucks extra, I'll go get some more parts. And, well, I felt obligated at that point. He gave me $200 tip. And so I, I stopped at Northern Tool on my way home. I bought another engine. I bought another pump mount. I bought a couple things that I could buy there that I couldn't find elsewhere. And I started building another one. And, okay, so now we got something going. Uh, my wife is not happy about this. <laughs> We're in a, a 26 by 30 garage. I got all of the household crap that doesn't go in the house, it goes in the garage. The kayaks, that, that kind of crap. Uh, but we had enough room to weld, weld a machine and then enough room to assemble a machine. And I just kept the ads going and, you know, okay, I got an order. I worked 15 hours a day. Um, I had enough, you know, a, a couple nickels to rub together to get some steel and, uh, and kind of scrape by those first 10 machines where I was like, well, I don't know if I got enough money to buy the steel or buy the pumps or, but we made it happen and a lot of long days, but, uh, the garage is growing a little bit. Yeah. We put an extension.
All right. So there's what I wound up with tonight. I'd say there's at least a half a cord there. And I've got quite the mess here to clean up. And I like cleaning this all up as I go. That way when I come out tomorrow or the next day and start on that, I'm not tripping through none of this. I've got a little bit back here in between the firewood racks. Got it out of the grass. Um, some uglies, some crotch pieces, some short pieces. So I'll split that, but it'll be at the end. And it'll go into our ugly splits bin. But as you can see here, quite the pile left. Slowly but surely, we'll get it. And then all this over here to get split so guys that's all i've got for you tonight as you can see the sun's going down my shirt is increasingly getting darker as is the sky and uh that's gonna have to do it for me today after working all day long i still gotta clean up this sawdust so i appreciate you being here i appreciate you watching and hopefully you enjoyed the wolf ridge footage and like i said i didn't get a whole lot of footage my first year being there and i was just enjoying myself and getting to visit with people and my number one goal was to uh, get my daughter registered up at iowa state i can't tell you how proud i am of my kids and it was good to see my daughter uh lose that fear of leaving home when she got up there she met some friends she's going to be an industrial designer and that is something that I would have been very interested in, talking with some of her professors and going to the workshops. Very, very cool stuff. Met a young man that was going in for uh, engineering and switched over to industrial design. He is a senior there. Uh, he made a bicycle, complete mountain bike out of walnut. Uh, awesome design. If I get a chance, I'll throw a picture in here at the end with my daughter standing by that bike. But what a great weekend. So guys, thanks for being here. Hopefully the heat, as you can see, will not keep me from uh, getting some content put out because I just work a little bit here and there whenever I can, as I know the rest of you are too. So be careful in the heat. As David Edwards always says, stay hydrated. And that's what I'm getting ready to go in and do. My mouth is dry, so appreciate you guys being here. Until next time. Get outside. We'll see you.